Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce Rosa Mira Guillen. She's Colombian. Uh, we share something in common. We are both from South America. And so she, Rosa Mira has been a member of the WCN um, group for, for a couple of years. And I cannot tell you that she has been fantastic to all of us. Every time I run into Rosa Mira, she had a big smile on her, on her face. And that helped me to feel very comfortable. Um, Rosa Mira is an architect. And one day, 10 years ago or, or so, she decided she didn't want to build more houses for people. And she decided she wanted to build houses and make cotton top tamarinds uh, a better life. And so here, I, let me give you Rosa Mira. Thank you, Yvonne. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, well, cotton top tamarins are just one step away from being extinct in the wild. Um, extensive deforestation of the forest home, um, as well as logging and hunting for the pet trade, is uh, posing a th threat to this wonderful species and its long-term survival. Um, we need to stop that trend, and otherwise we'll only be able to see cotton tops in zoos. Um, we need to continue saving forests for cotton tops, connecting forests for cotton tops, while we provide people with alternatives um, to generate income from other sources. Um, and in order to do that, we need your support, and I'm sure we can do it together, and this is actually a very good opportunity that we have to actually save a species from extinction. So I'm going to share with you uh, a few stories today, and the first one is um, Tamara. Tamara is a beautiful female cotton top tamarind. She is a very dominant and strong-minded little cotton top tamarind. She is the mommy of her family group, and um, certainly a very beautiful female. Um, very cute, the cutest. <laughs> and she um, lives in the forest with Ray. Ray is her long life partner. Um, Ray is more on the passive side. He's the, you know, the kind of easy guy and she, he deals very well with Tamara's strong temper and actually tolerates her very well. <laughs> and um, Ray carries that little backpack that you see um, with the little antenna, and that backpack sends a signal um, to us when we come into the forest every day and helps us uh, find him um, in the forest. Because, you know, we're talking about a one-pound monkey who lives you know, 20 to 30 feet above the ground and in a very dense and green, lush forest, just about the size of a squirrel. <laughs> and um, hard to see, very hard to find. There they are. <laughs> so we come into the forest every day. These are Felix and Soto, two of our field people. This is actually their office. They go in the field every day find the cotton top tamarins with the antenna, and uh, they pick up Ray's signal, and then find them and sit down for a while. And this is somehow like a soap opera every day. So what they do, it's a lot of fun. They just get to write, all right, what's going on? What's the gossip today? Um, who left home? Who's pregnant? Who's fighting who? Something like that. So all of those things Soto and Felix do every day. And um, actually, that's what we have learned so much about cotton tops. This is Lee. Lee is um, a young adult. He basically decided to stay home with Ray and Tamara. It's their son. And he is in charge of uh, surveillance for the whole family. He provides um, surveillance, uh, watching for uh, predators, boa snakes that eat cotton tops, raptor birds, and um, He's in charge of setting out the alarm call if somebody is or something is around the area. And um, 
uh, Tamara picks up the signal and it's actually Tamara with a strong temper that tells, okay, let's go in this direction and stay safe and stay away from predators. <clears throat> and this guy is Josh. He was born last year. You can see his hair is still not fully developed, his little cotton top. And um, most likely when he turns about two years old, he's gonna have to leave home. If he doesn't leave home, he's gonna get kicked out of home. <laughs> to find another cotton top and make another family. And, um, and yeah, uh, hopefully it'll be a handsome female cotton top and they'll be able to make another plot within the forest. I'm and this is Angie. This is uh, Josh's twin sister. Cotton tops are born in twins once a year, every time. And she just found a very tasty grasshopper that she's munching on. And even though uh, cotton tops uh, eat mostly fruits that they find in the forest, uh, every so often they munch on little insects and um, for protein. So she definitely is having fun with that little grasshopper there. <laughs> this is a clip we got from last year. <laughs> All right, and the last member of the family is the little baby who was just born about two months ago. Um, we don't know if it's a boy or a girl yet. He's, um, he was just born. And he is in the process of learning how to walk by his own in the forest um, where he lives. Uh, unfortunately, his twin sibling didn't make it this year. Um, and, but he's definitely learning. And I mean, at about, in about three months old, cotton tops need to make it on their own. It's a very scary time for them to make it on their own, but they have to because um, the family actually um, encourages that. He probably prefers to be in, you know, right on the back of mom and dad or Ray or uh, Tamara or any of the guys, but he has to learn to make it on his own. Uh, but he's lucky to have Tamara as the mom, and she is a wonderful mother. We actually have been studying Tamara since she was a little baby in her mom's tummy uh, 14 years ago. And she was, you know, somehow after she became a, you know, a, a young female, uh, a juvenile, she managed to kick mom out of the house and took control of the group. <laughs> and since then, she has been the dominant female and has taught us everything we know about cotton tops. So she's an amazing female. And thanks to her, again, we're sharing all of this with you. And um, actually, uh, we think she's getting old. I mean, this is the first time we follow a cotton top for so long. And uh, a couple of, uh, just a little over a month ago, she actually, when the baby was just born, they be females became very vulnerable. So she was about to be get kicked out of the house by another female. But I guess her family loves her and loves her temper and then chased away the other female and she continues to be the queen of the forest. <laughs> and something very, very exciting that I wanted to share with you today is that last year, right after Expo time, um, we finally, after so many years of battling with this, were able to protect legally protect the forest where Tamara and Ray and all of their family live. It was declared, yes, thank you. Ceibal was declared a private, um, sorry, uh, 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 protected area, a natural park, natural regional park, a thousand acres uh, that are dedicated to cotton top tamarind conservation. And um, not only for Tamara and her family, but for about 20 other family groups that live in this forest. And not only for cotton tops, because cotton tops share a home with many, many amazing, beautiful species of primates and uh, birds and reptiles and insects and snakes, some of them venomous as well. Uh, but it's just a very rich, biodiverse environment that we were able to secure for cotton tops. Unfortunately, there's still a long way to go, even though we have accomplished quite a bit and we still see extensive deforestation due to either development, mining, and of course agriculture and cattle ranching, which are the main activities that go on in this area of the country. And the thing is that cotton tops only live in this little corner of the world. Nowhere else in the planet you will see cotton top tamarins in the wild. And, um, Colombia, which is in South America, is the size about the state of Texas, more or less. Not even in the whole country. This is the only part within the country where you will find the species. 
So it's a very restricted range who used to be hectares and hectares of uh, tropical forest. And now it's just been scattered to little pieces of fragments of forest all over the place. Uh, but that's one of our main missions is to save forest. You can see on a recent exercise that the University of Georgia and uh, NASA developed how just visually how fast it's going away. In the last two decades, we've lost about 20% of the forest that was home of cotton top tamarins. But again, our focus has been the blue circle that you see on top. And uh, thanks to your support, pretty soon we're gonna start working on another area where we have identified scattered forest that we can protect, connect, and secure for cotton top tamarins. We've done it. So we know that we can do it again. And you know we're a long time committed to this. And we know we count on your support um, to do this. So, um, but again, I mean, cotton tops are threatened also because of selective logging and hunting for the pet trade. So I'm gonna tell you a story of another female, and she's Anna, a human female this time. Uh, Anna was born and raised in a very small community right by the home of Tamara. And um, she was born there with her family, her parents and four brothers. Um, she um, grew up in a small mud house and um, just like many other people in her community, they had to go into the forest and cut trees to do firewood, to sell the charcoal, or hunt animals for the pet trade or for consumption. Um, it was a survival issue. And um, so when Anna heard that Proyecto Titi was coming into her local school, uh, she said, well, let's just check it out. You know, this idea of making tote bags with recycled plastic. Um, and there you go, <laughs> beautiful mochilas. So uh, Anna said, yeah, just give it a try. She was a, one of the first ones, as a leader as she is, that uh, signed up for it. And amazingly enough, she had never heard of cotton top tamarins until we you know, told them about it. Never, just growing in this, just right by the forest. And, um, and soon enough, they had a small cooperative of six, seven women working on eco-mochilas and making um, a living out of recycled plastic bags. And they realized that lots and lots of plastic bags have turned into beautiful eco-mochilas. Actually, just a little over three and a half million of plastic bags that we have taken out of rivers and forests in Northern Colombia. And uh, yes, thank you. And soon, so, uh, Great things started happening to Anna. She got on a, a plane for the first time to travel to other places in Colombia, teach other women how to make eco mochilas. Um, together, we built the first conservation center for cotton top tamarind in her community, where she teaches other women and hold their meetings, and they manage their business out from this building. Um, she has been trained to be a good salesperson and to sell her products as well as many other in her group, and has been able to go to big fairs in Colombia to uh, sell her products and put everything that she has learned into practice. And she has become quite the person to you know, host the media and tell them her story about how she and her colleagues are working recycling plastic to save a cute little monkey that they had never heard of. So uh, in 2012, uh, Anna learned that she had been nominated by Friends of the Project to uh, the Equator Prize. Of course she got it. And she was able to travel to Rio de Janeiro two years ago and represent her fellow artisans and get a $20,000 prize. And it's a amazing, great recognition for Anna and her colleagues and of course an, an excellent opportunity to spread the word about cotton top tamarins and the conservation work that you know what together we are um, developing and um, now Anna just finished putting the tile floor to her house that she built with eco mochila profits and for her and her three kids and Geraldine who is the um, oldest of her of, um, of uh, her uh, son and daughters she um, just started uh, college in Barranquilla, thanks to all of the improvement in Anna's life. She's gonna be a technician in architectural construction. And uh, so Anna, of course, is very proud that she can provide
for her family, like this. And with the $20,000, uh, they invested on a little plot of land. They uh, bought some cows. They milked the cows, sell the milk to their community and other dairy products. And with that, they have been able to employ three of their relatives that are, instead of cutting trees in the forest, are now selling the milk or taking care of the cows or helping in the family business. So this is the kind of impact that all of this community work is, is having on the people that live close to the forest. This is our intention and this is, uh, like, like Anna, many other women are getting a benefit from conservation directly. So we know this is something that you know, makes us proud and this is the future of conservation. You got, have to be able to provide just an alternative income. And I truly encourage you to go on that table and buy a lot of eco mochilas so you can support the work that we're doing with Anna and all of our colleagues. And um, it's all for these little guys. So, so I got one more story for you and it's the story of Nelson. Nelson is a 17-year-old boy, was also born in another of the communities very close to the forest. Um, Nelson was in seventh grade when um, he uh, attended a class uh, that Ramon, which is our education assistant from Project to DT, came to talk about cotton tops. He'd never heard of cotton tops either, ever in his life. Uh, and he thought it was a lot of fun because you know, every week, these folks from Proyecto TT would come to the class, do storytelling, do a lot of games, do challenges, and uh, just have fun in the classroom. He got to meet cotton tops in the forest for the first time, right in the field, and absolutely fell in love with them and with the forest. So Nelson was really touched and said, OK, this is not, this is not enough for me. I want to do more. So he joined our TT club which is a program that follows the Cartitia program. And with the Titi Club, Nelson learned that he could do a lot of things in his house, in his home, and with his family to help conservation. So he learned how to compost. He learned about all of eco mochilas and the plush toys that the ladies make to make a living. He learned about recycling, and he learned about not having you know, cotton tops or any other animals as pets at home. And still, that wasn't enough for Nelson. So he joined our Titi Leaders program, which is a program that follows the Cartitilla and the Titi Club. And in these programs, he and some of his classmates uh, <coughs> got to design a project that will solve an environmental problem in their community. And so in the case of Nelson and his classmates, they developed a six-month recycling campaign. And altogether, in their neighborhood, they were able to recycle about two tons of recycled material that otherwise would end up in the forest and it would end up in the rivers in these communities that we work with. And that gave Nelson a lot of excitement and happiness because then he knows that he, as a 15, 16 year old, he can make a difference too, even at, at his young age. And so still that wasn't enough for Nelson. <laughs> in last year of uh, high school, he's now in the last year of high school, Kids in Colombia have to do social work and uh, community service, I'm sorry. And um, he somehow convinced his teachers that teaching little kids about cotton tamarins would be a great investment of his time for community work. And he did. So he taught what he had learned to the kids in his school, and he got credit for that. So he, at his young age, has become one of our best ambassadors in the communities. If it's even dancing to the rhythm of the cotton top dance at the cotton top tamarin celebration, uh, or making beautiful artwork so he can tell everybody who visits Proyecto Titi about this wonderful uh, species that is only Colombian. And of course, he himself considers a, a conservation hero. And uh, Nelson is about to graduate from high school in December this year. And guess what? He wants to become a biologist, and he wants to come and work for Proyecto TT. <laughs> and um, we somehow managed to help Nelson accomplish that dream. He wants to come back with Soto and Felix, sit down and get all the gossip from the forest every day, and so he can help protect this, this favorite species, which is cotton-top tamarins. 
So uh, fortunately, we're going to have a chance to help Nelson. And like many other kids, have found, has found a motivation on cotton top tamarinds. And he knows that he can make a difference for conservation. And all of these stories come together for these little guys. <laughs> so um, again, uh, in order to stop this trend of losing forest and losing that very unique species that lives in this little corner of the world, we need more stories like Anna's story. We need more stories like Nelson's story. And of course, we need to save forests for these beautiful, beautiful animals. We're counting on you guys. You are our support here for us in the field to be able to make a difference for cotton tops. And we know we can accomplish this with your support and, um, and we're confident that we're gonna be able to continue to give you good news. And we know we're gonna face new challenges, but we know we can do it because already we have people like Anna and Nelson in these communities. And of course, it's all about Tamara and her family. Thank you.